Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. Today I wanted to go back a little bit and uh, talk about something I experimented with this summer. Two frame mating nukes. Check this out. So the very first thing I want to point out is last winter I watched uh, one of Barnyard uh, Bees videos and uh, and he was playing around with some two frame mating nukes and in his video he made it look relatively easy to take these two framers get your queens mated and boom you've got a colony started so I was like wow that seems like a really great idea I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit so what I did is I took a five frame nuke and I put a divider down the middle allowing me two frames on each side and then once each colony on each side gets mated if I want to resort this back to a five frame nuke it's just as simple as pulling the divider out in the middle now I bought these boxes from Man Lake and I did this relatively cheap this was an unassembled box. Um, I like the finger joints better than just rabbit joints, but that's just me. Um, while it was unassembled, I had to find the center of each end piece and put a dado right down each end. And the reason I did that is for my divider to slide in. Um, I had some really thin old paneling, wood paneling, and I cut that down to size. And then I took, uh, you know, I'm a farmer, so I got plenty of chicken feeds and feed bags laying around. I took some feed bags and screwed them to the top, and then I used this, uh, it's actually part of a frame, and uh, screwed it over top of the feed bags to keep them attached. So this is my divider. Which comes naturally with an inner cover some five frame nuke inner covers and converted them into bottom boards. I made an entrance on each side, as you can see here on each end, one for each side. Um, I added some screen for venting and this is just some plastic screen, but it worked very well. And then in the middle where the handhold is, I just took some pop cans, cut them down and screwed over top of that. You notice when I set it down, the divider is pushing all the way through the hive, protruding out the bottom a little bit. Well, the reason for that is, is you can see we've got this little 3 8 of an inch lip on each end. Exactly what I need for my divider board to go all the way in and set all the way down against the bottom. Now see, if it doesn't set all the way against the bottom, you're going to have a problem. Because bees from this side will be able to get to this side, you risk killing your queen before she even gets mated. Or maybe even after she gets mated for that matter. So for that reason, I wanted to make sure there was no room on the inside of this for the bees to go from one side to the other. That's one thing I like about this feed bag as an inner cover. If I'm working this side, I'll take and set me a rock over here, holds the uh, feed bag out of the way, and it also keeps the bees on this side contained. Um, I can simply puff this side with a little bit of smoke. The bees go back between the frames. I flip this down, and then I can come to this side. Notice a square hole cut on, on each side or each compartment. And the reason for these holes is, if you look at my outer cover, I've got a hole drilled here and a hole drilled here. And they actually line right up with these square holes. So I lay this on here, like so. And then I'm able to take my simple jar feeder with the brake line, soldered in the middle, and I can just simply set it down in that hole, and bam, I'm feeding the bees. And I can do another one on this side. It's just that simple. And then I don't even have to open the colony to see, hey, the food's getting low, or they're out of food. I need to refeed them. Um, one thing I did notice is if you leave these jar feeders set right out in direct sun, uh, the syrup goes downhill very quick and can mold. So I've also taken once I do this, and I don't have one to show you, but I'll take an empty coffee can and cover this up. That way it's not sitting out in the direct sun. So these have worked very, very well for me. And what I like about them, like I say, is that you can remove the divider in the middle. Now, I also took the liberty of taking, uh, I think it was a plastic uh, Folgers container. And uh, I used my hole saw and I cut a bunch of pieces of plastic out in circles. I then drilled some holes for vents. Um, I made a notch for the bees to escape and I made my own bee escape. Very cheap and very simple. So I leave the screws in the in the box 
That way when I want to resort back to using these entrances, all I have to do is screw them on. So now you can see, right like that. Now the bees can fly. Now they're trapped in, but they've got ventilation. So it's very, very simple. And what I usually do is I screw this bottom board, which used to be an inner cover, to this nuke. That way it's all one piece. When I lift it up, they both come. Another thing you're going to notice is there's a screw here. And down here is a screw and a nail. Um, I'm not sure why there's a nail there, but we'll use this side for my demonstration. Let's say I drop in two frames of brood, cap brood. I give them a queen cell and I shake some bees down into here. I'm going to close this up. We'll say I do the same thing on the other side just for the demonstration. And we'll also pretend that this is a deep frame. Okay, so now I'm going to close it up. I've only got one feeder here. I'm going to start feeding them. Just to let me know, hey, you've given that one a queen cell. I'm going to go ahead and give them a cattle tag. And what this cattle tag is going to do is tell me they've got a queen cell. She's not mated yet because I've got the number turned around backwards. Once I go to make my inspections to see if the queen cell has emerged and maybe the queens went on her mating flights, um, once I witness actual brood and eggs being laid, that's when this gets flipped around. But at the same time, when it's backwards, I've still got something I can take notes from. Number 10, you know, whatever, today's date, added the cell, whatever it may be. So that system's worked very well for me. I know a lot of people like to use the brick system. Um, and the brick system does work very well. I can't deny that. I've actually got it set up over here in my nuke yard now. But the cattle tags are a great help for taking notes. So all of this together has worked very well for me. Um, and like I say, this winter I plan to, to order some more of these nukes and uh, what they call inner covers and outer lids and turn them into this exact same setup just because it's worked so well. Um, if I can take one five frame nuke, throw four frames in there and get two colonies started, I mean, why not people? It's that easy. Um, very little resources and it's very easy to manage something, you know, this small. So we're going to take our caged virgin where I've taken a little bit of crystallized honey and smeared here on the screen. That'll provide her something to eat and also draw some of the other bees and the queenless hive that I'm about to introduce this to up to her and they'll start to get acquainted. Now this is a nuke that I've divided down the center. It's got two frames on this side and an entrance, two frames on this side and an entrance on the opposite end. This is completely queenless on both sides for the last 24 hours. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this lid. We're going to open it up. I'm going to use my brick to hold this here down. And we're going to take this virgin queen and place right directly between these frames right at the top. Now in most cases when you're working with a queenless colony that isn't very strong you're not going to need a lot of smoke and I'm not even wearing my veil. So I'm going to leave that right there just like that. I'm going to close this back up. This is my inner cover and I don't have another queen to put in the other side. I'm still waiting for her to emerge from the cell and the incubator, but this is what the other side looks like. Like I say, the entrance is on the opposite end. So once I get another queen to emerge, I'll cage her and stick her between the frames on this side. Until then, I'm gonna close it back up. So what do you think of turning a five frame nuke into uh, two colonies? Would you rather just have the two frame box versus a five frame box with two colonies in it? So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, throw it a thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, 
please take time to do so and make sure you click on the little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, folks.